Atik Sanjay, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Like Anand mentioned, we've done a lot of sessions in the past about uh, how do you invest, where do you invest. But this is the first time we are actually talking about thinking uh, in terms of exits and returning the fund and completing the fund tenor. And uh, proud that we have three Indian fund managers today here who've returned capital and uh, closed the fund. Uh, so I'll start with a basic question. Um, you know, would love to hear from all four of you. Uh, how do you think about returning capital or BPI over the course of the fund? And how does that vary depending on the fund strategy? So a lot of us in the group have not really been exposed to that side of fund management. So would love to hear your perspective on that. We should go in order of who's done the most returns. <laughs> this yeah, is yeah, Anand. Anand's Anand first. Yeah. No, no, no. That's Madhukar. So we've invited you. <laughs> yeah, Madhukar, whoever's because, going. Yeah, we... Yeah. we, we uh, we, we we did not attribute credit to partner level, but uh, we can do it here. So <laughs> at least informally, we can do it here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I think uh, I think uh, fund return. Actually, when we started, uh, uh, the exit was more like. A, we didn't really know what, how we will exit, when we will exit, and what we will exit. All those questions were, so it was just faith, right, that we believe that something will be, will be exitable. I think uh, over the years, uh, when we have been continuously talking about it, I think it boils down to the strategy of the fund right, and what we have promised to our investors in terms of what kind of uh, risk you want to take, what kind of returns you want to create, right? So, for example, our uh, earlier funds were largely raised from H and I investors, where we had promised a quick return of the capital, right? That was what was the promise, right? Uh, in fund one, uh, because we were caught in uh, two down cycles of 2014 and 2016, so the returning of the capital seemed to be delayed, and and it took us around seven years, seven and a half years to return uh, the principal. And, and uh, since the fund size, fund life was nine years, uh, and after returning that, we returned the rest of the money in the next two years. But uh, it will largely boil down to what kind of investors you have, what kind of strategy you have. So for example, if you have institutional investors, the fund life is long, then, then you uh, would want to create some exit to show that you can exit and you have some good companies, but you would largely want to hold on to those uh, winners because uh, towards the tail end of the fund life, the value compounding uh, becomes really very uh, aggressive, right? So you don't want to miss miss out on that. <clears throat> Got it. Uh, Kathik, maybe if you could go next. No, so yeah, I agree with. Uh whatever has been said so far. Um, I think, you know, uh, let me be blunt. I think most of the Indian ecosystem is still figuring it out, right? How to exit funds. Um, and uh, it's it's tough because I don't think we have a playbook for how companies find a natural exit, right? So, yeah. um, and to a lot of folks ask, uh, do you know, will you exit next year? And it's like, it's the most ridiculous question, right? So. How do I know whether if you have not set up the company for an exit two years in advance, there's no chance you can exit and know it in advance, right? Um, what can happen is that there could be a natural order of things which lead to an M&A or a collapse of a company. Uh, and then you've exited, right? Um, and uh, as I think as a as a early stage VC, or even for that matter, mid to late stage VC, it's absurd to fight uh, a point in time when a company is reaching m and of any kind. That could be a, everything from an aqua hire to a $200 million m and um, I think that's a point where collectively uh, founders, investors, et cetera, feel that they can't build four five X from here, which means it's time to sell, it's okay. Um, so a lot of debates happen internally on, oh, there's so much more potential. Should we replace the CEO? I said, don't be absurd, <laughs> you know, 8% of the company. Just let them, let life move on for everybody. And so I think natural m and happens all through the life of the fund. And that's your first, uh, you know, unsolicited exit, if I may say so. And uh, so uh, 
let me leave the mambo jumbo out. So I'll see how, I'll tell you how I think it's playing out for us, right? And it has taken fund three for this to stabilize, right? Uh, or to give me a sense of fund two and three for it to play out. Fund one was an anomaly. Uh, Madhukar and Anand will tell you how difficult it was to imagine um, outcomes uh, uh, to be in your control in the 2011, 12, 13 era. You didn't even know if there was anyone to give you a series A. Forget about exits, right? Um, yeah. And so now you try to predictably go down that path of what it takes to get to an A and then a B and then a C. And at every round, I think the way to judge whether a company uh, is worth keeping, worth pushing for, is whether it has the potential to at least, at least, not most, at least grow 5x, right? Um, and I'm not talking about valuations. I'm talking about danda. Like, can it grow 5x, right? And move towards better unit economics. If you don't, then you should start plotting, selling this business or getting out of this business uh, collectively. I mean, even the founder needs a reality check. So where I see, when LPs ask me, uh, how do you plan to return the fund? Or tell me what the fund distribution pattern would look like. I've now sort of come up with a semi-formulaic answer. So what that means is approximately 20 to 30 percent, approximately, in four buckets of exits, the way I see it. The first of them is the zero to one X bucket. Means these don't these don't return any of your these don't return more than your principal, right? They either fail spectacularly or they get aqua hired. They get a headline, but you ask the manager how much money you made, you make we made zero. Right. So uh, that's the zero to one exit, uh, zero to one X. Then some very quickly and miraculously, some companies get bought for one to four X within the first three, four years of the fund. Right. Mm. So either pre A or post A, they somehow get acquired. We had four such outcomes between one and four X in the first three years of fund three. Right. So just take the money, be happy, go home. Like suddenly you've recovered. 10% DPI, even before you've called the last two tranches of the fund, right? Mm -hmm. So can you plan for that? It's the most, again, if somebody's making that statement, it's the most absurd statement. You can't plan for DPI in the first five years, right? It's an accident that that DPI has happened in the first five years of an early stage fund. Uh, I don't, we don't need to discuss stages here because all of us are super early stage investors, right? You're getting in on the ground floor at uh, seed, uh, if you're not playing for any outcome less than half a billion billion, then how can anything but uh, anything less than five, six years be but anything but an accident in terms of DPI or exit? It is an accident, right? It means it didn't play out to its potential. And that you can't forecast. If you could forecast that, why would you play the check? You shouldn't be playing the check if you think you can get an exit in three, four years. So somewhere in the third, fourth, fifth year, you start getting these accidental MBAs. You suddenly, the founder and you realize it's a very big boss, $100 million company. It's $4-5 million patek jayega, bech to usko, right? Or it's running out of money, or Series A is not possible, or Series B is not possible. So this, this has begun to... Uh, so the second category where we made this money, 1 to 5x, is another 20-25-30%. These are typically M&As between 15 and 100 million in my... Again, I'm just giving rules of thumb. There's nothing scientific about it. Then the other half of the portfolio is hopefully what pays back for all these sins, right? And so there, you'll be lucky if you get 20, 25, 30% super hits. It's unlikely. You'll probably get 30% medium hits, 35%, and you'll get 15% super hits, right? And each one of us has a couple in our, all our respective portfolios. So the super hits are the ones which generate 20, 30, 40x on a blended basis for all the pro rata you've played and the original check you've played. And the rest of them are the Theoretically, I'm saying, because we've not seen, for all the halabaloo, we've not seen cash exits in this country between 100 and 500 million. You can count them off on one hand. Cash exits, right? So you get stock in some ridiculously expensive unicorn. Good luck liquidating that, right? So I'm just saying, even in the end state, if that looks like a $250 million equivalent worth of an exit after that stock appreciates, your best case scenario is you'll get maybe two, three, four of them in a fund. So fundamentally, this, I think, is the breakup. When you know that this is the breakup, like Madhukar said, then you have to play the long game for incredible amount of compounding in those winners. So anything that happens along the way, just take your capital, be zen about it. Don't fight in days. Don't, you know, of course, you have to give like a spirited speech to the founder on why they can't build a billion dollar business. 
the damn guy or girl ignores you and goes next day and says bechna hai bech ke paise le lo right and all of that is your dpi in the first 5 6 years this has been our experience so far in fund 2 and fund 3 in this i mean i'm happy saying in public there are little little 30 35% dpi in fund 2 which is a seven year fund we are 10 11% dpi in fund 3 which is a four year fund if you had asked me at the beginning of the fund can i predictably tell you that's where we will be right now bullshit you can't tell that right and what we can say is that and now coming to the last part i think at a point in time as uh, all of us have shown like half a billion billion dollar mark if you feel you're losing confidence in your ability to see this as 5x you should start trimming your position and sell some via secondary if you're sitting on 50 million dollars worth of position you can take 10 15 home you don't have to be greedy and hold all of it and i i thought we were getting there this year it was a terrible year to try and do secondaries but ideally in a in a in a perfect year i would have sold a bunch of unicorn stock in all my unicorns this year yeah because we missed sell doing that last year right <laughs> yeah that's what no no i think and and i think uh, we uh, we're also guilty of the last point since i brought it up i should clarify we're also guilty of being ambitious for ourselves and our portfolio maybe yeah, naive yeah, yeah. and playing in uh, anand with opportunity funds as late as 2 300 400 million also i agree okay. i agree when you play at that level i actually feel i've actually made a house rule you can't sell in the next round yeah okay and if if you if that means that you look like a fool later that's your punishment so oh. i want all interest to be aligned across all funds right mm-hmm. don't like take one set of new uh, lps for a ride and play 300 million and say ne 400 pe exit mil raha hai main fund one ka exit you know original fund ka exit karunga wo galat baat hai Uh, you can't sell two different ideas of how great the company is to two different sets of lps at a point in time so i mm-hmm. want liquidation to happen at the same point and that will build inbuilt discipline about why the hell are you entering at a point where you don't have faith when you don't have then you pause around and start selling from the next round so that's yeah. been at least so far our philosophical stand we've not violated it so far and if i do i'll let you know sorry long answer but yeah lots of learnings across four funds three funds Thanks, Kartik. I think that's super helpful. Uh, Sanjay, your thoughts on this? Yeah. Um, so I think there are two, three dimensions. We actually have not raised and closed. I mean, not uh, returned and closed a fund yet. We have uh, uh, traded sort of one set of LPs for another. Uh, that that's what we have done um, in fund one. And uh, so the first set of LPs got a good outcome. Fund was doing very well. and we were very fortunate that as soon as we did that transaction 3 months later there was an exit that happened so the second lp also got some uh, you know amazing dpi and they were at one point um, yeah so they have also gotten a pretty substantial dpi so the sanjay would you call this as an exit for the first set of lps i know for you it's not an exit i understand that But how do uh, you yeah do? i think um, so this is another way of doing things at the fund level without necessarily touching the companies right right uh, mm-hmm. so our philosophy on this was we still felt uh, so the situation we were in is it was an 8 plus 1 fund uh, all of our funds are overseas funds and overseas lps so they generally 10 plus 2 but the first one was 8 plus 1 right mm-hmm. so we were approaching the ninth year and one of our lps uh, you know in the first fund uh, was mayfield they anchored our first fund as a um, um, lp but they had an end of life right so we had asked them you know when their funds end of life was going to be and so they had told us a timeline and so we had to make sure that at least they got an exit right um so when we looked outside you know there are uh, so just for you to understand there are uh, multiple ways and you can get an exit right one is you can uh, of course sell companies and you know generate real dpi right um for the fund as a whole and then once you've crossed your you know fund returns and hurdle thresholds then you know you can start uh, taking carry as well right so that's one way of doing it the second uh, way is of course where uh, you do have these entities which are specialized secondary funds right and a few names that you may have heard of are new quest foundation p who did our transaction uh, and depending on the size of the transaction there are some bigger guys also that come into play and new quest is now also part of uh, kkr i guess right 
a uh, handful of these uh, firms that are there, not too many actually. Um, so the way they work is they actually either will take over running your fund for you, right? Or, and in which case they will just look at all the assets and they'll say, okay, here's what we're willing to offer you. And they buy you out and then they start running the fund and they take over the board seats, et cetera. Uh, in our case, what we did was we didn't want that structure. We were very happy waiting for the companies to uh, to get to their natural exits, and uh, uh, if there is such a term. But uh, we wanted to make sure we offered a liquidity solution for our LPs, right? And so what we did was we worked with uh, a banker and and subsequently with with uh, this firm, Foundation P. It's all uh, publicly announced, and they looked at. Uh, so what we said is, look, we are happy to not take any carry at all, but please give our LPs a fair offer, right? And so they looked at the LP share of the NAV, assuming that there was notional carry and all that built in. And they said, okay, if yours is X, we'll give you some discounted version of X, right? And here is the amount that we are willing to pay. And there was one round of uh, cool. uh, it of negotiation that happened, you know, and we we facilitate the whole thing. So you know, we work with the companies to produce all the documentation, all the updates on their, uh, you know, their latest board decks, their latest audited financials, and so this is something that is important for all of us to start tracking. I think at an ecosystem level, maybe worth a blog to be written. What do people look for, you know, uh, when they want to evaluate these companies, right? So as uh, as Karthik and uh, Madhukar also mentioned. By the towards the end of the fund life, you know, it's really best case 20% of the companies that uh, will be the needle movers in the fund, right? And and depending on we have a very concentrated portfolio approach. So it's it's literally two companies, right? So, but it it could be you know six or eight or whatever, but it's a small number relative to the whole fund, right? And so uh, the good news about that is for all these secondary folks, they don't have to look at all the other companies, they just look at three companies and they say, okay, fine, we'll discount all these other guys to zero basically and say, okay, do these three companies uh, move the needle for me? And they come up with the price. You may go, So in our case, we took it to our LPs and this is called a tender offer, right? An LP tender offer. And when that happens, uh, it's an option for the LPs to exit or not, right? So of course, as a sidebar, you'll have a private conversation and they'll say, what do you recommend we do, et cetera. But uh, you know, in, in our particular case, it was a, you know, they all felt it was a good outcome. And so all of them, you know, they're happy to take it. Um, and the incoming LP then basically, so we replaced uh, all 19 LPs with one LP moving forward. And the fund got extended by another uh, four plus one, right? So, so that's how our, ours has been structured in, in this particular case. Now, along the way, there were a few other ideas that they floated by us, which we didn't uh, consider. One was they also do some sort of preferred equity financing, right? So then the LP might come and say, okay, I'll give you, you know, one X of your fund and I will take the first, I don't know, 2.5 X return or, you know, 1.8 X return or whatever, depending on how, they, how much they like it. And basically it means that, you know, they're just taking a preferred uh, return, right? So it's a very uh, creative way of doing this. Uh, it doesn't uh, impact much. The third way is where they take everything, including your carry and they should roll it into a new vehicle, right? And that I think is the worst for all of us because we would have slogged our asses for nine years, pardon my French. And now all of a sudden, now you don't get to see carry and your carry is also being sort of back to reset. to Yeah, being starting real. from scratch again, right? right. right. So we had basically yeah. said, look, that is a non-starter for us, right? Yeah. But you know, don't give us any money, but don't screw us also in the process, right? So we were very clear about that. But sometimes you may want to just get out you know, and say, yeah, whatever. Right? So in that case, you might take that. Um, but the benefit of that is you might get some money now rather than waiting you know, in the future. right? So that's sort of always a negotiated model. So, so these are the, uh, this is the other way of doing this, where you're doing it at the fund level. right? What uh, was important to us is we didn't want to touch our relationship with the companies right so southbound we wanted everything to remain where it was our fund that was the lp the investor in the, on the cap table so our founders actually saw no change right so there was no change at all in terms of their shareholding you know, they they didn't even touch their cap tables it's just it happened sort of north of the whole thing right so that's that was how we approached it uh, last year um 
separately from that, of course, nothing prevents, you know, transactions will happen at company levels, right? And that I think is what, you know, Karthik and Madhuk are also described. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. But uh, this is one more thing which is not very well known in India. I think uh, we did it and now recently uh, IQ did some variation of it, right? Where uh, you sold and exited also and returned. Uh, but uh, this is an avenue to keep in mind, right? Now, uh, I don't know if there are people who do this in a structured manner in India, but certainly uh, overseas. And it's very popular in uh, so the big name in this is a company called Setter in Canada. They're like the big, uh, big shots there. But generally, all these things do not make any sense if your NAV is less than if the LP share of the NAV, right? Where you, you take, uh, so the TVPI net, uh, if it's less than, at least $30 million, it does not make any sense, right? Because the amount of effort people will do to evaluate this uh, will be uh, will be quite a bit, so it has to make sense. Um, of course, you can put together some family offices with a creative structure like this. That's always an option. Now, at the company level, I think a few things we have started doing is um, pretty much after we do a seat check, we do a founder onboarding uh, with each company. And uh, one of the messages which uh, I, I drew the, the straw and have to deliver is someday we are going to come and ask for our money. <laughs> you know, let's, let's be very clear. We're not in this forever, right? It might be seven years from now. It might be 10 years from now. But do not be surprised when in the future you get a call saying, okay, guys, it's time for us to figure, to figure a way to get out of your company, right? Because... What we found is in the early days, you know, and uh, Karthik and uh, Madhukaran and I, we are all literally the first batch of seed stage yeah. uh, funds in India. It almost like was like a shock to founders when you say, okay, we're going to need to get a return back. Actually, honestly, for uh, for me, it was a shock that we actually had to return money back also. Right? We happily raised the fund. I've always <laughs> been an entrepreneur. My fund is also a startup for us. But... Um, you know, you know, when you raise your fund, especially the first fund, you know, it's like seven years is a long ways out, right? So you don't even think about this thing. But it's very important to set that tone with the founders very early, right? That this is going to happen someday, right? It's we're not going to harass you anytime soon, but please do not tell me at that time, I thought you were here forever, right? So that's something we need to train our founders with. The second thing was... Um, um, I think sometimes founders, yeah, at least in 2020 and 2021, we're getting a lot of money thrown at them. And we got sucked into this model of having overcapitalized companies, which didn't have the large um, outcome possible, right? And one of our companies was in that situation uh, and they were getting pings for series Bs, but with the pandemic, the entire business had uh, catapulted, right? And, and uh, had collapsed, which is Perpule. And there are two exit offers, right? And I have to hand it to Abhinav. We had a long chat and we said, look, there is no big company anytime soon here, but we're getting a decent outcome, you know? And, and actually these uh, the second category that Karthik mentioned, right? Where you get one to four X. Actually, it only makes money for the founders, right? It makes literally no money for the VCs because if you add up all of that and you look at it, you know, with the 0.1 DPI, you know, it'd be like five. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Sanjay, in fact, increasingly what we are seeing is that, you know, most of such exits are engineered only for 1x for the investors and founders then take ah. some extra extra, right? That's not what is happening of late now. But even if you get upside, you know, it'll be like 1.5x of what you invested yeah, yeah. or something yeah. like that, right? It doesn't add to the score for us, but it actually yeah. can be material for the founders, right? I mean, in India, if you are, you know, 30 years old and you make 20 crores, Good. Yes, uh, it's yes. a ton of money. We have right? been through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I strongly advised him saying, I said, look, this is about you. You know, I would take it if I was you. He was 27 years old. I said, you'll come out at 30. Every VC will be chasing you to, to invest in your next startup. Right? So I think this is something that we also need to be disciplined and not keep riding the founders. They keep raising the next round, raising the next round. And I think we all had moments of weakness in the 2021 uh, time frame. But anyway, so I think, uh, so those are the smaller exits that actually really matter to the founders and less to the thing, uh, to the uh, funds, but they're important, right? I think for all of us, you know, managing rows on our uh, uh, spreadsheets is, is important to get rid of them also, right? So the reason I brought that up is also, you know, generally if, if uh, the smaller funds are like the first ones, you know, you're also the confidant of the entrepreneur, right? And 
entrepreneur is turning to you for advice, you know, on, on all fronts, it'll be family advice, but, you know, professional advice, you know, company advice, et cetera. And it's important to keep that in mind and, and really just look at it from a pragmatic uh, approach and say, look, don't raise around just because you're getting the opportunity to. Because the moment you raise around with a, where your valuation gets to like 50 million, now your only exit opportunity is at like 100 to 125 million, right? And the number of, of companies that are capable of writing such a check are very, very small. And the number of options they have to, to buy are very, very large, right? So you actually, it starts getting, you know, uh, how should I say, it starts exponentially reducing the exit opportunities, right? But of course, if you have an opportunity to go all the way, why not? Anyway, so that's a slightly long-winded answer, uh, and happy to you know clarify any any comments or questions. Sanjay, just one question on this: when you communicate to startups that you know you need an exit at some point, right? Do you keep hammering it regularly, like towards like let's say after five years? Do you bring it up again or after seven years, do you bring it up again or just yeah, I think the seven years is the point and uh, I have to make one call tomorrow actually to one of the founders <laughs> and see, remember what we had discussed. Right. right. So no, obviously I don't want them to feel nervous during the seven years, Got right? Uh, Got it. Yeah, absolutely. True. 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 So I can, I can add a couple of things. Um, uh, Sanjay eloquently covered uh, the secondary piece. Uh, that's how actually we've returned close to two and a half X already. We'll get to about three odd X end of this month on funds one and one A, uh, which were our first two sort of structures. Uh, entirely secondary, actually, not entirely. So we had DPI'd about 0.6 and maybe 0.5 before this transaction, structured transaction that we did. Um, one was nine years in, uh, so we needed to get, at least give principal back. And the other one was uh, five years in, it was an extension fund. So basically, um, uh, the good news was that like a lot of the assets had moved into a point where they looked very solid and they had market pricing within the last year. And uh, even more surprising, uh, so by the way, Sanjay made all those plane trips to Hong Kong late 2019. And the plan was uh, Bloom Day would happen in 2020. And then I would get back on the plane and finish this myriad options that you described you go to each building in hong kong you get a different option right every guy has his own idea of how he wants to do a secondary structure so i had about five structures offered to me different ones one was all the portfolio one was half the portfolio one was only three companies one was too concentrated for them one was too diluted for them and my my first portfolio was crazy right so i have like yeah. 10 solid assets even today right uh Grey Orange Purple, Turtlement, Cashify, Railia 3, Web Engage, Exotel, ID5, just doesn't stop. So it gets super confusing for people, right? Like, how the hell do I handle this? So the Hong Kong guys all got nervous. So we came back, COVID hit, no planes, right? Hong Kong, you couldn't even, can't even enter now. And so basically, uh, your market got shut down. So we tried pitching on Zoom, and it was like Greek to most of these guys, both in Hong Kong, Europe, Canada, everywhere. So then I I tried this crazy idea of trying to convince Avendis. And they said, yeah, yaar, kya baat kar rahe yaar, ye sab kahan bikega India mein? And this was early 2020. By late 2020, we had like a handshake, a structured deal. They evaluated the assets. They picked six assets. We rolled wow. it into a structure, 300 crores. The secondary position was worth 225 crores. They said, we can use the spare capital for primary into these companies or into, because we also run opportunity yeah. funds. They knew our bad behavior. So they said you can take the extra money, but less than 300 doesn't make sense to raise the uh, fund. Massively oversubscribed. We gave up option to the first fund guys to roll over their positions. About 30% of them rolled over their positions. 70% took the liquidity. We got 380 crores. We said, what the hell will we do so much money? Five of those six companies raised within six months and got markups. We plowed all the money into those companies. Wonderful. So it's like a miracle story, partly driven by just the resilience of building solid companies from that 2011-12 yeah. year. Partly because these guys yeah. had, uh, you know, all got like rode the 2021 wave. You no, know, Karthik, and, that actually, you know, while what Sanjay did was sort of a well-trodden path, but what you did was like a really very innovative structure. The hats off for you know, it, it was crazy. It was crazy that yeah, we actually like really a crazy structure. And 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 I think. It's also crazy that we, like, when you think about it, 380 crores of domestic capital to pull off a managed secondary. To your mm -hmm. point, Sanjay, same thing. The only condition was that I 
you know, if I had to sell, I would sell to the cap table. Why the hell would I sell to some secondary yeah. guy? Yeah. All my crown jewels, there were people willing to buy, right? We had ready offers for most of these companies to sell piecemeal. The problem is, so the example I use, because I get quizzed about it a lot, why the hell didn't you sell all of them? Uh, right? I said, if you sell, if you, if you sell uh, the crown jewel and the two adjacent jewels, and you're trying to, uh, the, nobody will buy the rest of the tiara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest are all small diamonds, right? You can't build a tiara. So what we built, yeah. because we had scale, we actually built a tiara and sold the entire crown, right? Not just the centerpiece, right? Yeah. And and that allowed us, because we had this <laughs> nice array, it looked very attractive. As, believe it or not, as we speak, Anand, we're actually executing part two of that. That's where all this extra. Oh, okay. Amazing. Yeah. Because they said, oh, six is a lot. There's no, other assets can wait. And then the other assets happen to be Zopper, they happen to be Carbon Clean, which just took off. Uh, and then, uh, which is the one I'm yeah. forgetting. Uh, so we, we got the Cashify. So we basically, those were dissed 18 months ago, and they've come out even stronger. They've all raised around this year in this market. So right? you, will, you will roll that into another fund? Yes, one Y. Wow, awesome. <laughs> yeah, Karu, sir. Oh, yeah, no, <laughs> four plus one, four plus one, like Sanjay said, we had to roll over some of our carry. We could keep some of our carry. It's the first ever carry income we saw. But basically, uh, basically to, I mean, kudos to you guys to have finished the fund life. I'm thinking we'll get there next year, early next year. It'll close the first fund, which was a, like Sanjay's case, eight plus two, got two years extension. So it's become like a 12 year fund by the time we get out in 23. It's a 2011 vintage fund. And yes, uh, it's only considered a halfway solution because some of my LPs think it's not good enough. I need you to get out fully. So you can logic here. I have, I have real buyers, real pricing. Uh, you know, it's not like it's hava. But yeah, until I prove that all. done uh, out in 25, 26, I don't think people will believe that it was for real. So I have to get all these positions out. And in yeah. all humility, I mean, you can quote me and the 35 people as witness. I wouldn't be happy if I don't deliver 10, 12 X fund in totality, which mm. means I deliver like close to somewhere between four and five on this current uh, portfolio, which I have, which is my target for March. And then on top of that, if I rolled it over, I bloody well deliver another two, two and a half X, right? So basically I end up with like a 10 X plus fund in totality, but it would have taken 14, 15 years. That's fine. Yeah. But we're all innovating to your question, uh, you know, the original question, sorry. So we're, 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 <laughs> we're innovating on the fly because, you know, necessity is the mother of invention in that sense. I think your point about a 14-year fund, uh, that's super interesting. And in India, generally, we see 8 plus 1 plus 1, while globally it's 10 to 14 years. Do you think we'll increasingly see that trend in India as well? Uh, just go to SEBI with a longer tenor fund. SEBI is a different animal. I mean, since we sit and, we sit and negotiate with them on terms, uh, SEBI is just becoming pig-headed about somehow the tenor of the fund being gospel, right? Mm. Uh, they wanted to market it as a longer-term fund than actually market it as a 10 plus 2 and then ask for extensions. They don't understand the marketability of the fund takes a hit. If you go and say, I'm yeah. going to do 12 plus 2. I, yeah. I actually, I, let me take a step back. I feel if you're thinking, if you're claiming that you're in a super hot market, and India is a rock star market, you shouldn't beg for the extra time on day one. I don't think that's fair, right? So, because you're competing with global capital. Right. Right. And so you have to, everything, unfortunately, this is what we try to educate SEBI. When you're competing with global capital and you want us to look like world-class, then don't give us terms that are shittier than world-class world investors. So I look like a second grade investor in the cap table. I have to be judged yeah. and governed in the same way that my other uh, peers in the cap table look like. They can't have different terms with their LPs and I can't have different terms with my LPs. When will you get this in your head? I don't understand. But somehow just because I take some three, you know, four retail guys here and there, somehow they think I'm, you know, I have to be judged like a criminal. Hare, the bulk of my money is like large institutional boss. I'm answerable to them or to your regulatory? Hey, it's not the thing is retail, Karthik. Somebody who puts the crore, one crore rupee is not retail. Are they, that's how they treat it, boss. There is a <laughs> proposal to yeah, take that up now yeah. because they're not happy with the fact that there are too many one crore guys playing venture capital in this country. But anyway, sure. the limited point, I think, uh, to your point, uh, question, Shruti, is that I think 10 grades, marketing greater than 10 plus 2 is not easy. Hmm. 
Right, right. You can't you can't go and say oh it's a it's a phenomenal opportunity to further compound. You say come and talk. This is what we said when we wanted the opportunity fund. They said boss, when you deliver that, you come and talk. I'll give you the grant. Right. Got it. So if you're, if you're holding a kick-ass company and you think there's three x to IPO and you have to hold it for the thirteenth and fourteenth year, you'll have Bindas allow you to do it as long as you have DPI two DPI already. So <laughs> you can't you can't you can't hold the entire fund to hostage and say give me fourteen years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Kardeep, so I think... Don't do X, he won't say anything. No? He'll say, yeah, do it, you have to do it. Do X, you'll get it. No, there's no issue. Nahi hai. I think it's a very fair ask on the side Correct. of LP. I think, I think CB is being unreasonable here uh, because it's at the end of the day, it's investors' money, right? And they can put a higher threshold, right? They can go and say that 90%, 95% of the investors have to agree for the increase of the tenure. Because there, there's real value which is getting compounded and you've done all the hard work, right? So you have held on to an asset which has basically gone through a journey of ups and downs. Now, all the value is concentrated in two companies which are de-risked, right? And there's very little reason for the company to go from there. And all your investors, in my case, uh, we did do a full... Uh, distribution after selling our asset, but that's not that was not our choice, Kardik, right? Because uh, we were out of time, right? And and Sebi refused to increase that. You know, my hundred percent of the investors actually wanted to roll over. The only problem with the uh, the vehicle is that if I try to roll over by creating a new new vehicle, then there's a tax implication, which means that somebody who has put one rupee now my fund since it is seven rupees has to pay uh, uh, tax on 6 rupees, which is more than what he had committed actually in the beginning, right? And, and then he holds on to the remaining four and a half, right? Which becomes stupid, right? So just think of an investor who put one crore in 2013. Now he has to literally sell uh, another one crore to pay the taxes and then wait for another three years, then he will probably get 5x or 6x or 7x, right? So which was unreasonable. And I think it's very unreasonable and we don't have the structures which are available to global yeah. investors. Yeah, and I agree with you. It's really unfortunate, yeah. Yeah, so I think what Sevi, um, uh, since we're on the final word on the like final comment on the topic is because we have to deal with them on a daily basis. Our reality as an Indian fund is we are not able to get through to the regulator and say that in a highly sophisticated institutional investor base of this nature, their majority vote is far more important than what a regulator thinks is of value. Exactly. They are capable of handling their own money. They've given $30 million or $20 million or $10 million. They And, and they, if you have not performed or not acted in good faith and this thing, they wouldn't have given you money in the next fund. That oh. hurts me 10 times yeah. more than what, but think, what you're, but you know, what you're to, to asking me to... to Adhere to 10 years from now. What yeah. is this? Kati, to come back to, and Madhukar, maybe you can also comment on this. To come back to building a fund, right? I mean, you're building a firm also. Sometimes it makes sense for your first set of LPs to stretch the fund. Sometimes for you as a GP, you want to stretch the fund. But your firm is better served with uh, early return of the firm because you're building a track record. You are convincing every other LP that there is real value in the portfolio, right? And whenever you, next time you give, CVPI, it has some meaning. So that track record, at least your first one or two funds, couldn't you actually optimize the returning early? Sanjay and Madhukar in that order, right? Yeah, so I was just going to say, uh, you know, uh, a few other uh, things, right? I think the discipline of raising every three years, right, uh, is also very uh, important, right? Not, not to do it too early, especially your yeah. first fund, right? Um, yeah. And the reason is that generally, when it's the third fund, that's probably when serious LPs will start, you know, giving some hints True. of, hey, you know, when are we going to see anything coming back, right? Yeah. And in an ideal world for me, I would love to tell LPs, all you have to do is commit twice. And from the third time onwards, you know, you're just rotating the money, right? Now, the, the good institutional LPs plan three cycles before they start. Uh, I mean, they, when they when they commit to you, they're committing three cycles because they know that it's going to take, especially a seed fund, is not going to return money before year nine, right, or year eight. 
so that's generally the cycle but if you if you deploy capital very fast then you are going back to the well to the to the same lps right and at some point they you know they're going to say wait a minute you know we we need to see something coming back so that's also one aspect the second thing is if you deploy broadly over say 30 to 36 months then you're not going to be hit with the same cohort of valuations and you know cohort of entrepreneurs and you know because over the life of the fund, there will be one collapse that will happen in the stock market. And, uh, you know, all of us will take one correction over the life of the fund, right? But what you don't want to is like, if, if we had all deployed 100% of our funds only in 2021, we'd have all been, you know, in, in deep trouble, right? Because we would all have been paying, you know, $20 million seed rounds, right? At least now there is some sort of uh, dollar cost averaging of entry prices and stuff like that, that will happen. So that was one uh, related point I wanted to make, which is, you need to think about before fund three, I need to definitely start having some returns. And that means that you generally should plan for a three-year deployment cycle. And, you know, so a lot of these things actually get, you know, you, they triangulate very fast, right? The number of deals you're going to do, the amount of ownership you're going to have, the amount of follow-on capital you're going to have, your overall fund model. I know it was an earlier topic, right? So returning capital uh, to LPs at that point in you know, getting to one X is probably the holy grail. I think if you can, for in a formulaic manner, get to one X, then I think you in can. In six write. years, you're saying one year before fund three. In six years, probably one year before fund three is ideal, right? Yeah. Uh, and so in that case, you know, if you have to take some chips off the table early, so be yeah. it. Yeah. Right. You're leaving some secondary exit. Yeah. yeah. And then we we kept the goal of 0.5 DPI in five years. Because anything more just wasn't, I mean, it, it didn't feel like a goal. It was a lottery. Right? <laughs> but I, I think times yeah. have changed now. Uh, I'd love to we can. Right. You're right, Sanjay. So you're right. In fund two, we were able to reach, I mean, it's a small base, but we were able to reach 0. 0.9 in around six years. So it's still yeah, happened larger the fund, fund three. Larger the yeah. fund, more unlikely. So I've, uh, More I'm unlikely. Exactly. You're right. I'm, but Karthik, still, still, you know, I mean, it depends. Last 10 years were a bubble like era. We don't know how it will be uh, selling in a, on a $200 million fund or even a $100 million fund selling $50 million in first five years is really, really like, you know, I mean, it's a tough one. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, I'm also yeah. agreeing with you. If no, it, no, but I'm saying for, for, the young, for the younger funds, you typically hope younger funds, yeah. like Karthik and I did with, you know, $10 million fund, $7 million. Same for us. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think for younger funds, First two funds, you should try to do more DPI in the first five, six years. That's how you cement your track record. So yeah. I think that's I'm become easier. Way. Yeah, than when it was in 2011 and 12. Yeah, Madhukar. In the, in the pure venture model where you have very few winners, right? Uh, you have to just uh, hold on and uh, keep yeah. your fingers crossed on your winners. You can't really take off chips on the table, right? So... I think what what uh, which I said in the very first uh, uh, in the very first uh, opening also that the strategy of the fund is very important and what you communicate to your investors right so Anand to answer your question if you are basically doing your first fund or the second fund where your LP base is entirely HNI and and you have promised both a IRR as well as early liquidity right so in that case you will have to uh, the, <laughs> take it on your, and you have to exit right uh, and we we would in our case also we would have exited had we not got stuck in the 2016-17 rut right and and then uh, and then covid again hit in 20 right so so i think if you have promised your lps that in fifth year sixth year you will try to uh, give your capital give, give the capital back then you will have to basically take the decision but when you are in the third or fourth fund I think you the expectation is not that. So then you can have a, a more tactical kind of a arrangement where you say we'll return some capital opportunistically where you see the company is overvalued uh, at some point of time. And you yeah. Say that, okay. yeah. So Madhukar, you know, I mean, I was having a discussion with Ritesh. Uh, he's been a speaker on the earlier section earlier. So of Stellaris, you know, and we discussed that in the first six, seven years, you will face conflict between what the GPs want to optimize and what the firm as an entity needs, right? And what is best for the first set of LPs also, right? There are three 
sometimes appear to be at a conflict <laughs> and sometimes you have to balance the lp interest against the need of the firm so as gps yeah. we might feel always because you know if i stay for two more years i'll get double the carry always uh, always that equation is there but as a firm to cement your track record you are better off selling early and that yeah. trade off you have to do in the favor of the firm in the first 6 7 years once you earn that credibility you can do the other reverse yeah in the first 6 7 years first two three funds that was you to optimize it yeah so, no, so kartik mentioned earlier sorry go ahead kartik no no so if, if you can hold that thought sanjay two points to react one is um you you brought an interesting point up i and i state it also quite transparently that the only point of uh, conflict between gps and lps is that last part of optimization for carry right uh so because it's in my interest to get an absolute number up versus the, it's in their interest to only optimize for irr right so they don't care about whether you got them 8x uh, if you actually got them true, 4x true. for a better irr from their perspective it is irr of the cash that you took is the only thing that matters that I, said I, there I, are I some that kartik i want to debate that no you... no so I, i'll just extend it i'll extend it uh, there was one anchor lp of ours who said the only reason i would come and do an early stage fund in india is for absolute dollars mm -hmm. because to multiply that kind of dollars back in my hands is not trivial okay. so if you are able to compound theoretically at the same rate for another 3 4 years so that is the big question mark sanjay so if you dropping right. your irr dramatically so i think people uh, anand people are willing to trade a, a very yeah. far reaching mature lp will trade a crappy multiple at 29% irr for a much larger multiple at 22% irr true it's true. very difficult to compound money like that right at yeah. those rates but if you if yeah. you god forbid fall make that shit fall to 14% he'll whip you right i agree so yeah so basically there's a there's a judgment room there for the multiplier effect that you can create at the compounding effect that you can create in a great company which explains why sequoia today is trying to raise evergreen funds and you know yeah. and, and trying to win over their their lps to give them capital to continue holding post public for another 3 4 5 years right. right because the compounding that you can see in public in a good market you cannot see in private necessarily after a point hmm. in time uh, and 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 the 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 counter to that uh, is um so a lot of people think i am guilty of never selling hmm. i'm partly guilty i'm not saying no i am uh, attuned to what uh, anand said that you know i am optimizing for uh, a little bit of bravado right i actually feel delivering uh, 3x on a seed stage fund in india whatever the irr feels like it fell short if hmm. i have a shot at like delivering a 7x and kartik it feel short although although it 2000 and 12 we both were hoping for 3x somehow right <laughs> barely no no my <laughs> one of my lps one of my lps told me you be after 14 he told me aap log 1x bhi de paoge so i said bar bahut low hai yaar we'll beat it yeah 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 so okay. i'm just saying you no know, but i'm saying the kick the kick i realized every time i would go to an lp base internationally the bar for india early stage was getting higher and higher yeah so you saying yeah. boss itna dur aake kyun khelu india early stage if you can't outperform my bloody early stage in the us वो जनरेट कर रहा है राइट टॉप क्वार्टर टॉप क्वार्टर की बात हो रही है ना हु केयर्स अबाउट लाइक बॉटम क्वार्टर राइट इफ ही इज प्लेइंग यू फ्रॉम ऑल द वे इन द वेस्ट कोस्ट देन यू बेटर बी टॉप क्वार्टर राइट टॉप क्वार्टर ग्लोबली ही डजंट गिव अ शिट अबाउट टॉप क्वार्टर इंडिया राइट सो बेसिकली देन यू 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 आर सेइंग आई हैव टू प्ले फॉर एंड शो दैट दिस इज डैम पॉसिबल दैट वाज वन कीडा सेकंड इज विद अगेन ऑल ह्यूमिलिटी यू एग्जिटेड इन योर सेकेंडरी रिसर्च ऑल ऑफ यू at a relatively high base my bad luck other than gray orange nothing moved there hmm. till 2019 mai kya 60 million pe exit karu nahi karu kar nahi karna hai mujhe i hmm. played that's what i'm saying look at the counter intuitiveness right i have raised opportunity funds and played at 30 40 60 80 100 200 million dollars fresh money where is the question yeah. of exiting i am freaking yeah. betting that these are 500 million to billion dollar companies it's an embarrassment if you exit at 50 60 that's point 2 yeah. point 3 there are certain situations where you can't exit i was in carbon clean and i was in gray orange as the only indian institutional investor till they crossed 100 million so where are you going to exit to whom right you are the my bop of that company from an indian context how can you exit right so i'm yeah. saying there is also context 
like like somebody said why don't you exit in slice i am mm. the only institutional investor in slice from india even today mm. at unicorn level mm. right there are companies like that in my portfolio nobody gave a shit about those companies but we took them to that scale you can't suddenly walk away from that cap table but Karthi, you can you can still do a call on that company i know i know but you can still do you will still have to optimize that for your track record right i mean you i agree I mean, that you know so that, never... this is where so because like sanjay said he disagrees with me on one thing i disagree with everybody on this uh-huh. i am it was a hard route a lot of people said you're an idiot you for your 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 uh, portfolio and for your brand you guys should be raising a lot more money a lot quicker yes we went through a painful route because mm-hmm. lp sat on the fence like this and critiqued us without understanding the base realities of the underlying portfolio and underlying what what goes on in india ab baa baith ke gyan baato gyan baatte raho how the hell do i care it's my reality so i postponed mm-hmm. even the wife picks me down for this leave the lps right <laughs> no carry for 10 years so they're saying what the hell are you doing boss slogging your ass off no, no. like the- kartik i think everybody on this call is sensitized to this fact you know we had prayank and uh, ritesh in the first ever lecture that you will not see any any money for the first 10 years everybody no, knows so then <laughs> then my my point is even when you know that adan so my point is what are we short term optimizing for what what could have happened at best i would have gotten my 60 million dollars raised in 3 months less or i would have got 80 million dollars right is a bolne ke liye hota hai excuse dene wala excuse deta hi rahega aapko pata hai mujhe pata hai right that some lps who came into this fund have been talking to me for 7 years 4 yeah. years Six years. So, उनको देना था तो अब भी दे सकते थे, right? उसको देखना है over a period of time track record. वो थोड़ी उस समय आप थोड़ा DPI बढ़ा देते point two. इसका मतलब थोड़ी कि वो दस मिलियन चेक करता. ऐसा कुछ नहीं है. So yes, the slog was a little harder. The time might have been a little longer. The money might have been a little lesser. I am very happy to have done it on my terms. Of course, the the final die has not been cast. And I have had this debate with Sudhir. I've had it with TCM. I have it with the Stellaris folks. It worked for them. It wouldn't have worked for me. I wouldn't have slept easy. Fundamentally, I'm selfish as an entrepreneur. I do it for my well-being also, and my ego also. And I will not compromise on that. Who are you as an LP? If you're if you're freaking so damn good, you be a GP in my market and deliver on no us, right? So LP, I'm telling you now. I you make me an LP. I will argue out any point you make in any direction you want me to any day. <laughs> There is right. no right answer yeah. from the LP world. Right? right so everything right. they will debate from the other side you you build 25 companies they say it's too tight a portfolio you build 45 they'll say it's too wide a portfolio you exit mm-hmm. early they'll say you're not compounding you exit late they'll say you're gripping greedy there's no end to this so fundamentally i have looked at every asset in isolation and made the calls i have made and i'm happy to be where i'm at whether i'll be proud and whether i would have delivered the outcomes that i'm talking about another four years i post- postponed my my fate but we'll talk then but as of now i can sleep well that i made all the right calls mm. except for a handful one or two i'll admit ola within the uh, two uh, six months of the tfs acquisition we were offered a secondary yeah and i first time somebody was offering me a secondary in a unicorn i had no idea so i called four people <laughs> they all told me to hold i was an idiot for listening right i should mm. have sold right so i one or two like zomato i thought about it thought really hard i said bahut bump up hoga finally i said ye sab unicorns mein kuch samajh mein nahi aata hai bech dalo so now the, my stock looks like a great sell because i sold it pre ipo mm-hmm. all these acquisition stocks have sold bindas because you have no control yeah. you have no idea what these businesses are you know yeah, yeah. I mean, bad- those very small holdings you know you should get out as soon as possible because you actually don't know whether to hold or sell right you know information same thing with acquisitions like you know somebody yeah. will optimize like true, sanjay true. brought up this point you'll try to optimize ki 2x milna chahiye 2.2x milna chahiye are let the founder go take your money yeah yeah, yeah 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 you know karthik in fact off late you know we have we have actually engineered to make sure that founders get <clears> some money right when in an acquire because you know i mean we have earned that from our lp you know there our founders cannot go penniless and that so, much so our lp is allowed said, like as sanjay said na ki onboarding mein he tells founders that one day i will ask for money i tell my founders that either you give me 1000x or i don't care right so <laughs> so they are not interested yeah, in i mean actually you're, you're right your fighting of uh, the money is not there zero to but no so true So, so, so I, I want to just uh, 
yeah. I got uh, disconnected from my connectivity. Well, the point I was just uh, disagreeing with Karthik on was just the point that LPs only care about IRR, right? And and there are several that also, but then you clarified that. But um, you know, ultimately, I mean, we've had we had one comical situation in in hindsight. You can call it comical, but it it really hurt when it happened where we we engineered a secondary in our first fund for generating point, our first ever dpi 0.2 dpi right? mm -hmm. yeah. and that happened and the course of the paperwork was about 6 months and during that time that company had like a exponential growth and the person who bought our secondary led around in that company at a 5x uh, valuation oh my increase God. Oh my so God. so we were literally Taking point two when we could have taken one X, right? <laughs> and from the same person who was actually writing a check at the higher valuation, right? But of uh -huh. course, once you give your word, you give your word. So these yeah. things happen and you can't optimize, mm -hmm. right? You have to make that decision and you cannot look, you can learn from that decision, but there's no regretting it later on, right? When you make a decision to take some chips off the table, you know, you might look like a genius uh, two years out, or you might look really stupid also two years out, right? Or two months out, right? And, and yeah. that's, that's so, life. Really. No, no, so true, Sanjay. You know, so I mean, I think one decision that uh, Madhukar and I feel that we could have done better was that last year our fund two went to 11x TVPI. Right? And I'm sure you have also been through that situation. And in the bubble, like Karthik said, we were actually in the investment mode, which we were instead of taking chips off the table. You know, we had set a goal that we will do a 1x PPI. We did 1x out of 11. Okay. But 1 out of 11 is not a smart move. Right? I feel we could have done better. Right? And uh, this is sort of, you know, we could have got out at a at an IRR of some 60-70%. And all of us were in that position in the, that right vintage, you know, which got peaked last year. And now we will just be slow cooking and the IRR will keep dropping every year. When it's very clear that what will happen. So, so occasionally, I think what my learning. I, I was saying, I wanted to just comment on this IRR, right? Yeah. See, I think as much as you're right, LPs want to optimize on on net IRR. Uh, at least, certainly, the fund of funds do, right? Because they've raised also other people's capital, right? And that's so they're being measured. But for primary capital, they don't have too many places to put the money, also, right? Where. I mean, as much as we struggle to fundraise and, you know, and, uh, echo sort of Karthik's point, right? Even, Sanjay, even in the focus. endowments have told us the reward. They want to optimize the multiple. Correct, correct. That's exactly. The higher. primary capital guys want to optimize on the multiple. multiple. The fund of funds guys want to sort of do some blended of multiple. And it's like a cross function of, you know, uh, IRR and uh, multiple. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the, the, that's actually the point, right? That they actually don't have too many places, right? So if you can actually yeah. grow another uh, 2x over the next five years, it is significant for them, right? And they would rather uh, wait it out because they, they are primary capital. Um, yeah. But, you know, ultimately, I think for your own comfort as well as, as young VCs, right? Uh, young might be as uh, age-wise and uh, uh, tenure-wise or just tenure-wise. I think just this discipline of being slightly dispassionate and, and the challenge we all have, all of us, I think, is we are the first institutional investors yeah, in yeah, our yeah. company. Our founders turn to us, like Neo, for example, Vinay, is a close personal friend right now. Yeah. And founders turn to us for, you know, where should I send my kid to school? You know, how should I be thinking about my secondaries? How should I mean? So we are the, the personal confidant, you know, if they want a salary increase, I'm sure the first come and ask you before they send the email to the board saying, you know, is this okay for me to ask? Yeah, Things yeah, like yeah. that. All the time. And it becomes very difficult for us to get dispassionate about the relationship with the founders and with the company. We all fall in love with our companies, right? We're always pitching. Okay? We fall in love with our business. LP, are you a late stage investor? I've got some companies. Are you early yeah. stage investor? I've got some companies. We're all continuously sort of batting for them, right? And it is not easy to sort of be dispassionate and say, I need to you know, uh, return some capital to LPs. And when I get an opportunity, I should sell. So I think no, you no. have to figure out a way to be dispassionate. And the way that has worked sort of for us is in generally in the partnership of the three partners, we try and make one person sort of almost the enemy of the company. Right? So that that person is always asking uh, slightly harder questions to the lead partner. 
and mm. uh, ensuring that uh, you know we are i mean i wouldn't say we have institutionalized it but that's one way that has worked a little bit where we should also not only be drinking too much of our own cool aid right and whenever we have done that where everybody says oh this is the greatest company we have fallen flat on our face so, so that's, that's a good different. trajectory for a partnership to mature from you are right yeah. no i i i just wanted to add one point that you know i was analyzing uh, the pattern of exits and what occurred to me in fact after missing uh, whatever we should have missed is that exits happen in windows usually happen every 2 3 years right and there is a window for exit so you that's actually <laughs> you will have to say that you know after your 7th year you actually can't wait for the 10th year the window for op- exiting could actually have happened in the 7th year or 8th year and then if you don't take that window you have to be cognizant and clear that it will be after 3 years only because it could be after 3 it could be just, it could last longer but usually there are one year windows when the markets are at you know really a bull, big bull run either because of global stock market indian stock market you know whatever the reason being and and you know so we we can't really miss for example if you missed exiting in 21 your window will now come in 25 only i mean i don't yeah. think the 23 for sure nothing is there 24 we are hoping for but may not happen i mean you might have to wait longer so the timing of window is important and to that extent you have to be dispassionate right i mean in the yeah. window actually we we become more passionate about our company they are raising money and all that uh that window will will have to be optimized i've seen that for example you know uh there was a window for example in 2014 you know i mean uh we suti has a suti you have the graph you want to show we have we already over time yeah yeah so we have a graph so... where where you know all of our funds we were marked up like 4 5 x in 14 right and then again, again it went down to 2 and then again went back up right so there are these windows when when you know uh or for example saas company is uh, somewhere in 15 beginning and 15 end there was a drought for saas company and trading below 7x valuation so one Anand. thing uh, as you are saying this i'm recalling rec- recalling something that one of our seasoned lps told us and now i'm remembering as to listen to him which mm. is if the company is raising you know and the premium they're getting is like 4 5 years out right mm. sell mm. take some chips off the table yeah that's right? the it's economic right. window and that is that is happening because the whole economy is like that right i mean uh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. will we'll... i have a comment to make on the passion part of it so maybe we were all entrepreneurs when we started the funds right and maybe we were too attached to the companies but i think in the coming ages and the current uh, lot of entrepreneurs they themselves are not attached to their companies so maybe it will be easier for the next generation of fund managers to sell because right now looks like you've been reading a are, book yeah <laughs> so everyone is trying to sell so maybe that problem will not be there for us in the future yeah but i think cool generally we don't pick such founders all of us so yeah yeah no but i think i think you know we all had a window of valuations 4x 5x 4 4 5 years out and we still you know i mean most of our companies had that opportunity in terms of you know i mean not in terms of the opportunity people will i mean most good companies given 3 4 years will catch up with the valuations they attained in 21 but that actually was a window Anand, actually, this is, this, this is a high regret business, right? Uh, sorry to comment, but if you sell, you look stupid. If you don't sell, you look stupid. Right? We sold in 2018 in share chat, right? 2021, I was cursing myself that why we sold at four four hundred million when the company was going to four billion, right? And now today, when the market is down, we are saying maybe you should have sold some more in 21. who knows in 23 yeah yeah we'll yeah. say that we were very smart that we didn't sell i think i think yeah, so yeah. The, i think of course the, true. the one thing that didn't get touched upon and uh, because we're running out of time and i don't know when we'll have to wrap um which i uh, have a very strong view on and i've aired it publicly is i feel um we still haven't proven this mega scale opportunity for uh, indian businesses though we keep raising larger funds that need those mega scale uh, exit outcomes right and we've spoken a lot about timing secondaries and packaging secondaries as a portfolio what about fundamentally building companies to natural exits 
right? And uh, some of them are m and but uh, is that the natural exit? Yeah, it is. 90% of VC exits are m and uh, small, medium, large, all put together. Very few go public, but I think, uh, so my orientation, like both of you have said, uh, Madhukar and Sanjay, what you talk to founders about, believe it or not, sometimes we surprise uh, founders on in uh, as early as pipeline conversations that um, to try and test the gumption to build a $100 million net revenue business, depending on the business model. And if they can, uh, then why are they not building towards a semblance of profitability that can list this business, right? True. In India, I think it's a crime to come up with this bullshit argument that you need a unlisted unicorn before you can go public, right? You don't there need are enough, enough examples today, whether it is Nazara True. or whether it's India Mart. India Mart. Yeah, yeah. Whether it is yeah, Team Lease. You know what Team Lease is free money was? No, you know, but think the know what example, example is right now is Traction. Traction, right. is so, proven, traction is still not right. proven, sir. So I, I'll I'll hold on traction, but traction yes, in the sir. sense that satya rasi crore ka revenue tha. But I'm just like look yeah. at team lease, right? Team lease hazar crore ka pre money tha. Public pe. Ye pandra saal ki pehle ki baat nahi hai. Che saal pehle ki baat hai. Ab panch sukr panch hazar crore char hazar crore pe chal raha hai. Founder har har oh. saal founder aada ek percent bejte hain board ko puch puch ke. Every year you get a higher secondary. Why can't we learn some lessons? And I'm not saying it's applicable to everybody, right? But how can 30, 40, 50% of our exit ecosystem not be driven by this, this paradigm? I think it should be. Agree. Right? It, so it that should is the reality be, and I think, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think I bring we just have to... is yeah. that, you know, at the low end, even at, you know, $10 million revenue, you know, if, if, if you're right, it has to prove it out over a 12-month period. But I think the, the bottom line is, you know, it, it it really is an eye opener for us, right? I mean, I mean, none of us is expecting that companies at 10 million will go IPO in the future, you know, necessarily. But at 30, 50 million dollars with 70 percent year on year growth or 50 percent year on year growth for highly right. profitable, so solid businesses, and so we should not be raising these rounds at four, five hundred million dollar value Correct. for such companies. Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Exactly the point. No, I think I think uh, yeah. you need to temper the rounds after the first fifty million dollar fund raised in these companies, right? I mean, maybe maximum hundred million dollars. You should not raise beyond that. I mean, you will sort of temper the fund raises after that. Uh, that's the, where the challenge happens. Anand, if Sanjay. your goal is to to do a hundred million dollar revenue company profitable, you can't really raise way more than hundred million dollars. I mean, that has to yeah, be the, yeah, yeah. the discipline. Beyond that. It I used to be 10 by 10 is. was the mantra. <laughs> but 10 yeah, million yeah. by 10 million. But I don't yeah, think you can stretch it. Right? So, you know, actually, some of the SaaS companies in the US which went IPO like 10 years ago, they had all raised under $100 million. Right? Most of them. Correct. Even in US also. Right? In fact, uh, today, the ones which have raised four five hundred million million, they're struggling to go IPO because so much of money has actually spoiled their financials and the culture forever. Yeah, and it's make my trip regardless. worth $70 million when they went IPO. No, 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 I think I agree with Karthik that, you know, uh, companies can go comfortably IPO at around 5,000 crore rupees yeah, or so. Yeah. And uh, that's actually a good zone because there is enough demand for profitable companies uh, going IPO in India. We should so, uh, three years, 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 yeah. 5,000 crore, I didn't hear the rest of it. Uh, 5,000 yeah. crore, there's a sizable demand for such companies, Sanjay. Right? I mean, uh, 5,000 crore 5, market cap. Ah, market, uh, cap. Uh, market, market cap. Market cap. Yeah. Market cap. Yeah. So anything in between the 500 to 800 crore rupee revenue range, you know, and if you're profitable, let's say 100 crores of profit, you know, that's yeah, a which good... Is 100 million uh, ARR. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 100 million ARR and 10, 15 million profit uh, pack is like a very good zone for getting listed even, even pad is less also people will accept yeah no the, the, there's a double whammy you know anand beyond that if you're going to continue burning money which company has the either the cash or the public market you know support so, to come no, and no, buy such we 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 are then what happens we are is we are all we are all subject to this stupid game of waiting for market momentum in secondary yeah. Ye strategy hua? Then you're dependent on SoftBank, Baya, and Tiger Baba. No? So, <laughs> how is that a strategy? Like, no, it can't what be is a strategy. strategy? And you, can't, uh, you can't assume secondary sale. That is not, should not be no, if so you're really to, working. Yeah. To somebody else's point, should we sell all or not? 
बॉस ऐसा आपके हाथ में नहीं है दैट इज अदर पॉइंट आई वॉन्टेड टू मेक सेकेंडरी जो अज्यूमिंग दैट आपके हाथ में है आपका लाइन है आपके पहले एंजल्स है आपके पहले छोटा नाउन दिस न्यू फंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ ऑल ऑफ अस वो स्कटिंग टू फिफ्टी के वो भी लाइन में खड़ा है राइट primary founder is smart munjal when he was raising for an academy this round he didn't allow for a single dollar of secondary not one dollar <laughs> i would have sold yeah yeah, yeah he kept everything yeah. in primary now he looks like a genius in retrospect right all of that is sitting in his so, bank he has 3 okay. 400 million dollars in the bank so if he had allowed secondary i would have taken but he didn't how is it in your hmm. control yeah. 400 million dollar ka round hua 1 dollar secondary nahi tha sir yeah बोलने के लिए है सब कुछ मैं एलपी को क्या समझाऊ सेकेंडरी कैसे नहीं क्यों नहीं हुआ था ही नहीं सेकेंडरी ओके यू वांट टू कंक्लूड आई आई थिंक थिंक वी आर आर ओवर टाइम यप दिस 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 बीन अ सुपर इंसाइटफुल सेशन सो इफ इफ देयर 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 रन आउट ऑफ बट एनी क्वेश्चंस uh kartik sanjay thank you so mm-hmm. much for spending time with us and uh, this uh, love the candid and uh, i think free flowing like, discussion this is phenomenal very helpful. No, no. phenomenal i think uh, yes, i have one topic suggestion uh, for one of your uh, sessions yeah uh, which is can we please have a discussion on this you know nonsense of valuations here i mean for <laughs> like fund level valuations right i mean we have taken a very firm stance saying you know uh, told our lps this is what we are doing end of discussion right we are not even suggesting getting a third party valuer and stuff like that and we have stayed out of that tamasha because those guys insist on valuing the entire portfolio and uh, you know if the three companies are going to contribute i don't mind spending money on them but why am i valuing things which are writing off right so i would love to have a session uh, and probably with a few yeah, cfos yeah i think and- uh, we need to gang up uh... Also against the valuation companies also right because they insist on yes. big four big four is a oligopoly right so that is also important it's not just against SEBI yeah so, both Karthik please help us here trying sir trying they're not listening yeah, yeah. Mm. no 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 we need to we need to uh, so we we found some hack but we need to discuss right when I mean, the uh, fund uh, finance guys need to discuss and get something going on here. Sounds good. Thanks a lot for the audience. Thank you. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Recording will be like a sad YouTube. Bye.